Uh, my name is Rafael. I'm an affiliated fellow here at IS. Uh, my research here is part of the Energy Program Asia, and I'm also a PhD candidate, candidate at the Federal University of ABC. ABC is a region of Brazil, uh, of the state is São Paulo, of Sao Paulo, the state that I came from in Brazil. And I would like to first thank you, Ayas, for this opportunity to talk to you all today. And also thank for my stay here in Leiden. So my fellowship at Ayas is for two years. It started in September, 2020. Because of the pandemic, I couldn't come in 2020, of course, but I came here, uh, I'm here since September, 2021. And my research day is ending this month. So I'd like also to, to thank IS for that, for the great, great time that I'm having here. Uh, so I'm here at IS, I'm writing an article. Uh, this article is part of the Energy Program Asia, the Political Economy of the Belt and Road Initiative and its reflections. And this program is coordinated by Professor Mehdi Parvizi Amine. He's also my supervisor. Uh, he's supervising this research. And this research program is a program uh, that is conducted by us, by IS, uh, in partnership with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Uh, the aim of the program is to analyze the China Belt and Road Initiative the origin, the process, but especially the impacts in different countries, uh, especially in Asia, Africa, and the European Union. But uh, for me, I'm looking into Latin America. I'm the only one looking into Latin America. I'm also the only one that comes through, the only, the only researcher that comes from Latin America and is uh, looking into this region, like to how, how are the impacts of the Belt and Road Initiative in Latin America? So going into the research, first I want you to look at Latin America. So in red, you see the countries that are already part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, so Latin America has this specificity that not all countries are part of the Belt and Road Initiative. So you can see that the largest countries of the region, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, the, these are big economies in Latin America, are not part of the initiative. Argentina joined the Belt and Road Initiative this week, so I have to update it on that yesterday because it was two days ago that they decided to join, they signed the papers. Uh, so uh, these four economies, they, they are found themselves in a dilemma whether reject the BRI because of geopolitical concerns, especially because of the pressure of the United States. Uh, we have to remember that the United States consider Latin America as a backyard and they have a great influence in all these countries. Uh, or to these countries uh, can opt to participate in the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, looking into the economic opportunities that this initiative uh, can, can bring and China can offer. Uh, but also there are small countries uh, that are not part of the initiative because they don't have diplomatic relations with uh, mainland China. They have diplomatic relations with Taiwan. So this is like a, a challenge to China to expand uh, the BRI in Latin America. Uh, so talking about Brazil, that is my... I'm looking especially into Brazil-China relations. Uh, we have to have in mind that Brazil and China have a great historical, uh, political, uh, very a very close uh, political relationship. They these are both countries that they are the largest countries of each region. So Brazil is the largest economy in Latin America. is the most populated country. China is also, they are both developing countries. China is the most populated uh, uh, country of, in Asia, also uh, economy that is growing very, very fast. So since the 70s, these countries have a lot of similarities and they have common goals in the international agenda. So they work together, especially in multilateral institutions to achieve these goals. And uh, more recently, since the 2000s, uh, they started to uh, found their own institutions. So they found the BRICS group, 
that is together with Russia, India, and South Africa. There is also the development bank, uh, new development bank that is part of, uh, is also known as BRICS uh, bank. Uh, uh, the COSBAN, that is a multilateral channel between Brazil and China to coordinate uh, their political actions. Uh, and now uh, China and also uh, other Asian countries founded the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. And Brazil is not an Asian country, but is also a founding member of this bank. So these two countries worked in the political uh, landscape very, uh, very close together. Uh, and China is very important to Brazilian economy. China is the main trade partner of Brazil uh, since 2009. As I said, it's a uh, important, a really relevant political partner since the 70s. Uh, it has a relevant market to uh, Brazilian exports and ensure access to cutting edge technologies and also this important source, source of capital uh, to Brazil. And Brazil is important to China due to the big market that Brazil offers and especially because China wants to guarantee access to uh, raw materials and agricultural products, especially oil, uh, minerals, and soy that are the main exports from Brazil to China. Uh, in this graph, you can see that, uh, just a moment here, better. Um, you can see that, uh, these are the exports from Brazil to China and other selected uh, partners. So you can see that China is so important to Brazilian economy. So we've, we've considered the United, the exports from for the United States, the European Union, and the set of countries of Mercosur. They, this all, this all countries together, uh, they are not so relevant as China is to Brazilian economy. So. Uh, Brazilian economy today is very dependent uh, of China. Uh, also, China is investing a lot in Latin America as a whole. And in this graph, you can see that half of these investments directed to South America goes to Brazil. Uh, but as I, as I said, China is very important to Brazil, but there is a contradiction right now for Brazilian foreign policy especially because of the triangulation between Brazil, US, and China. Uh, the contradiction is that China is way more important to Brazilian economy than the US is right now, but still uh, Brazil cannot ignore, just ignore the US and uh, is in a dilemma on why they uh, deal with these two great powers. Um, so the methodology of the article is studied with a large bi bibliographic review, but also to understand the perception of the Belt and Road Initiative in Brazil and why Brazil decided not to join so far the Belt and Road Initiative. I did a survey and also interviews to understand uh, the reasons uh, why Brazil didn't join the Belt and Road Initiative so far. And then I, I analyzed analyze this data. So from, we have like 86 participants in the survey and also eight interviews. So I divided this participant in four sectors. We had responses from the private sector, public sector, also diplomats and people from academia. Uh, so uh, these four sectors, they have different perceptions of the reasons that why Brazil didn't join uh, the Belt and Road Initiative so far. Uh, in the private sectors, it's important to notice that uh, a lot of people don't know what the Belt and Road Initiative is. Uh, they have little knowledge about the Belt and Road Initiative. The people that uh, know that what is the Belt and Road Initiative think uh, they believe that BRI offer great opportunities to Brazilian economy, especially in the infrastructure, but also people that uh, don't know what the Belt and Road Initiative is uh, believes that uh, Chinese investments in Brazil, it's, uh, uh, China is aiming to colonize Brazil. This is a part of the discourse of some sectors in Brazil. 
Uh, this means that uh, China is buying Brazil, not buying Brazil. This is uh, also uh, something that the president of Brazil also says. Uh, and also this, some of these uh, people of the sector believes that BRI can be a channel to corruption because Brazil have a historical uh, uh, episodes of great infrastructure projects related to big corruption scandals. So they believe that the BRI can like repeat this past of uh, great scandals of corruption. Uh, in the public sector, most people believe that the BRI and, uh, could affect negatively uh, their, uh, Brazil and US relations. So this is the main reason that Brazil is not joining it. So geopolitical reasons. Uh, but it's also important to notice that one of the, re the responses of this sector, the public sector, came from a high-ranking official that is linked to the Minister of Health. And he believes that Brazil is not joining the initiative because of ideological difference between the Brazilian government and the a Chinese government. I will talk about uh, this more later, but uh, it is, this is important because uh, Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, deals with deal with the pandemic uh, very bad, and he tried to his government tried to uh, use China as a scapegoat, accusing China, blaming China for the pandemic, and also refusing to buy Chinese vaccines. So this uh, uh, this uh, this this high ranking official saying that is uh, because of ideological difference is very important to understand the reasons that uh, Brazil is not joining the BRI. Uh, from diplomats, it's very difficult to get answers. Uh, so besides the survey, we have to do a lot of uh, interviews with them to get uh, responses. <laughs> uh, but but uh, most diplomats disagree that Brazil-China relations can be negative affected if Brazil decides not to join the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, and they don't believe that uh, Brazil-US relations can be negatively affected uh, if Brazil decides to join the Belt and Road. But also they don't know what the effects could be. They are um, in a more neutral position. They don't know if it would be more positive or negative. But uh, this is neutral because they have a little more cautious position. They said that uh, Brazil needs to decide if it is joining or not, basing uh, the decision in the quality of these investments, in the quality of this partnership, what the BRI can bring uh, of new, new, a new thing to the relationship between the two countries. And also talk about technology transfers uh, that this is something that the Chinese generally don't offer uh, while you're investing in, in Latin America. And in academia, these are, this is the most uh, dissatisfied, dissatisfied group of them all uh, about the current situation of the Brazilian foreign policy towards China. Uh, and they believe the main, re the main reasons that Brazil is not, jo not joining the BRI right now is because of pressure from the US and also the current Bolsonaro government. Uh, so there are similarities between these four groups. They all are dissatisfied with the current moment of bilateral relations between China and Brazil. They all agree that China should be a priority in Brazilian foreign policy. They believe that in the last four years, the last uh, years of Bolsonaro administration, there were more setbacks than progress, progress in the bilateral relation between the two. Uh, none of them consider China as a threat to national security, as it's uh, the government's good says. Uh, and they all believe that President Bolsonaro's statements have negatively affected relations between the two countries. Uh, so this is Bolsonaro. Uh, this is the current Brazilian government and it is uh, very aligned with the US interests. And uh, Bolsonaro's speech towards China includes uh, blaming China for the pandemic. He talked about uh, a communist virus, especially uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Brazil, 
uh, he has an article saying that uh, uh, the coronavirus is a <laughs> this is uh, can sound like crazy, but uh, he says that it's a plan to spread communism uh, uh, in other countries of the world. So he called the coronavirus a communist virus. Uh, they also talk about new colonization that China is buying, is trying to buy Brazil. And they also have a, like a xenophobia speech, uh, refusing to buy Chinese vaccines. Uh, they are against vaccines at all, like all vaccines, but especially Chinese vaccines, uh, only because they come from China. So the responses, the main responses, as we, we can see, uh, points to the pressure from the United States as a main reason, and also the ideological difference uh, between the Bolsonaro government and the Chinese government. Uh, this tension between the, the current tension between uh, the, these two countries created by the Bolsonaro administration but because of the debate is so focused in uh, these uh, ideas of uh, whether the vaccine is Chinese or not, or the, is a communist virus or not, the PRI is not being sufficiently discussed. So that's why, for example, uh, we cannot focus in discussing if these investments are good or not to Brazil, if this can uh, support Brazilian development or not. Uh, and so in, like, we can conclude that uh, the reasons that Brazil is not joining so far is from the external pressure for the US and geopolitical risks. Uh, but Brazil and China, they have already worked together for so long and they have built a lot of institutions together so Brazil doesn't see why join the Belt and Road Initiative. What uh, are, are the advantages of joining the BRI? Uh, what the BRI can add of something new in their bilateral relationship? So it's not clear. It's unclear what are the advantages. So what's the point in messing with the US if it's not clear what the BRI can bring? Uh, and also because of the ideological difference that we already talked about and because the BRI is not being sufficiently discussed. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, China is right now is being used as a scapegoat. Like the, admin, the current administration is trying to create an enemy to put China as a threat. And this mobilized the support of high right sectors of the Brazilian society and uh, this end up so like avoiding uh, the discussion. Like uh, we are not discussing the serious economic, political and social problems that Brazil is facing for a, for a long time, like almost a decade now. Uh, and we are discussing like if China is a threat or not. Uh, like, uh, so these are my appointments. Uh, like I said, this is an ongoing ongoing uh, article. I'm writing this article right now. So any questions and any comments are very welcome. Uh, thank you very much.